you very much. Carl, thank you. Let's take a listen to the winner evening. tonight in Michigan and, I don't and think Mississippi. I've ever had so many horrible, horrible things said about me in one week. Thirty-eight million dollars worth of horrible lies, but that's okay. It shows you how brilliant the public is because they knew they were lies, and it, it was just uh, really amazing to watch. And to get these kind of numbers where they call them immediately is, uh, is just something very special. So I want to thank the public. I want to thank the people of Michigan. I want to thank the people of Mississippi. And it is such a great honor. And uh, it's also really wonderful to have you at Trump National Golf Club. Uh, Jack Nicholas did this. It's a, a Jack Nicholas signature course, and it's a great, great resort and place. And uh, we have a lot of our members here, I see. And uh, we love our members. And Jack, Jack, by the way, Jack Nicholas is a special man, and he did a special job, and we love Jack. And we have another special man, Paul O'Neill of the Yankees. Come here, stand up, Paul. Paul. In fact, Paul, you, come, you originally come from Ohio, right? Oh, wow. Paul O'Neill of the Yankees. Hey, Paul, you come from Ohio? Do you endorse me? I love you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Wow. That's a great endorsement from Ohio. Thank you. Uh, he's great. It looks like he could go out, go out there right now. So I just wanted to tell you that it was really an interesting week, an amazing week. I want to congratulate a lot of people, and including the candidates. I mean, this is not easy stuff. When you're, uh, when you're doing this, it is, uh, it's pretty wild. And I must tell you, it's very, very important as a Republican that our senators and that our congressmen get reelected, that we put a good group of people together, that we keep the people that are there. We have some terrific people. Not all of them are on my side, but we have some terrific people. And it's very, very important. If we're going to be effective, it's very, very important. One of the things I'm most happy about is that the turnout has been just massive for every, every week. Whether it's South Carolina or any place, I mean, it started pretty much with New Hampshire and uh, it, it really, Iowa, no matter where you go, it's, uh, it's records. I think it's actually the single biggest story in politics today. It's what's happening at the booth. The tremendous number of people that are coming out to vote. Uh, some of the states are getting, in fact, one has a 102 percent increase over four years ago. It's uh, amazing, 102 percent. <laughs> Um, on average, you're talking about probably more than 50. You're talking about millions and millions of people, whereas the Democrats are down 30, 35 percent. They're down from what they were. We're up by 50 percent and even more than that. You're talking about millions of people. So I actually think it's the biggest story in politics today. And I hope that the Republicans will embrace it. We have, don't forget, we have Democrats coming over, very importantly. We have independents coming over, and they haven't done that ever, probably ever. And with all of these people coming over, we're going to have something very, very special. If I win and if I get to go against Hillary, polls are showing that I beat her. And some of the polls have me beating her very easily, because when you take advantage, we will take many, many people away from the Democrats, and we'll take many, many people away that normally go Democrat as independents. And, that, and we're seeing that. We're seeing that. We had people come over here who have never voted Republican, who have never even thought about it, and they came and they voted Republican. And I'll tell you another group of people that I've seen, and I'll be signing autographs after a speech, and we'll be talking to people. And I've had many, many people say, and it was a beautiful thing to hear it, Mr. Trump, I'm 67 years old. Many people. I'm 67 years old. I've never, ever voted before. I've never come close to voting before. This is the first time I'll ever vote. And that's so amazing. It's so amazing. And they do it with such spirit, so it's, it's really great. Um, I want to thank the special interests and the lobbyists, because they obviously did something to drive these numbers. I mean, we're close to 50 and 40. And, no, I, no, but I want to congratulate them, because to raise that much money that quickly is a pretty good feat, right? Do we agree? No, many of them are my friends, but they just have to gamble. You know, they have to do it. I want to thank uh, Paul Ryan. He called me a couple of days ago, 
He could not have been nicer. He was very encouraging, and uh, I have great respect for Paul Ryan. Great respect. Uh, Ted Cruz is interesting because he's always, I mean, he's always saying, I'm the only one that can beat Donald Trump. You have to vote for Donald Trump, and you're going to vote for Donald Trump, and you're going to be miserable. You have to vote for me. But he says, he's the only one that can beat Donald Trump. And I've heard it so many times. And I said, but he never beats me. I mean, take a look. He never beats me. Meaning he rarely beats me. The fact is that we're going to do well. Ted is going to have a hard time. When he gets to certain states, he's going to have a hard time. One of the things we do is we get up to New York. I'm going to do great. We get to New Jersey. I'm going to do great. Chris Christie's here someplace, and the governor of New Jersey, great prosecutor. I watched what he did to Marco. Where is Chris? He's around here. Sir. And great prosecutor, and, he's, uh, and, and really, when he came and called and he said, I've seen this, it's an amazing thing, it's a movement. Many people have called it a movement. I mean, four covers in the last three and a half months on Time Magazine, I mean, many people have called it a movement. And part of that movement is what I said before. I mean, it's the people want to be involved. So when Chris called, and when Sarah Palin called, and when Jerry Falwell Jr. called, and when uh, Joe Arpaio called. I mean, you know when Joe Arpaio of Arizona calls that Trump is tough on the border, okay? And I don't want to be tough. I want to be fair. But we're going to be, we're going to have borders again, folks. We're going to have borders. We're going to have the wall. We're going to have borders. And people are going to come to the country, and they're going to come into the country, and they're going to be very happy, but they're coming in legally. They have to come in legally. <laughs> Uh, Mitt Romney got up and made a speech uh, the other day. No, that's okay. Look. No, no, I understand. No, no. He's a very nice man. Um, but, you know, I understand. Look, it's hard. When you go through this and then you get to the, the final gate and you don't get over it, it's a hard thing. I mean, I, so I understand. But he did make some statements, and I brought some things up because he said, water company is gone. I said, it is? I didn't know that. I have very successful companies. Let me just explain. I'm going to do this in about two seconds. But I filed with the federal elections 100 pages, almost 100 pages, that many of the press have gone down and seen. And they were all very, very impressed. I built a great, great company. I have very low debt. I have assets like this. This is owned 100 percent by me with no debt. You've seen Mar-a-Lago, you've seen, and that's a 100% by me with no debt. I have Trump International where you were last week, 100% by me and no debt. You look at Doral where we just had the major championship. I've been having a lot of things in Florida. Uh, partners with Related on numerous jobs on the beach, very successful. Partners with Gil and Michael Dezer on the beach, massive buildings. Nobody ever talks about this stuff. And, you know, many, many jobs in New York, including a city on the west side from 72nd to 59th Street on the Hudson River, one of the most successful projects ever built in real estate. Uh, the Bank of America building a big chunk of it in San Francisco, 1290 Avenue there. There's many, many things. And, and Mitt got up, and he really shouldn't have done it. It wasn't, it wasn't becoming, honestly. And he talked about the water company. Well, there's the water company. I mean, we sell water, and we have water. And it's a very successful, you know, it's a private little water company, and I supply the water for all my places, and it's good, but it's very good. Trump steaks. Where are the steaks? Do we have steaks? Do I? We have Trump steaks. He said, the steak company, and we have Trump steaks. And by the way, if you want to take one, we'll charge you about, what, 50 bucks a steak? No, I'm all... <laughs> We have Trump magazine. Let me see the magazine. He said, Trump Magazine is out. I said, it is? I thought I read one two days ago. This comes out, and it's called The Jewel of Palm Beach, and we, it's all, it goes to all of my clubs. I've had it for many years, and it's the magazine. It's great. Anybody want to run here? Take one. Club. My club champion. So, and the airline, by the way, I sold the airline. You know, he said, Trump Airline. Well, I sold the airline, and I actually made a great deal, complicated, and in really terrible times, the economy was horrible, and I made a phenomenal deal. I had the shuttle, and I sold it. I made, you know, so I'm hearing about all of these things. And by the way, Trump University, it's, we're holding it. When I win the lawsuit, which I'll win, uh, they did an ad, Rubio did an ad the other day. He had two or three people, and the three people were saying, 
uh, all, it was so terrible. It was, the reason I didn't settle, every one of these people, in fact, we sent them out, and the reporters don't like to report it, but we sent their letters out, their report cards. Their report cards were all excellent. Beautiful statements. We love it. You can't settle cases when the person suing you has given you letters, and in some cases, tapes, saying how great it is. It was a very nice thing, so we're putting it on hold. If I become president, that means Ivanka, Don, Eric, and my family will start it up. But we have a lot of great people who want to get back into Trump University. It's going to do very well, and it will continue to do very well. But we have a, a lawsuit where they're trying to get, you know, we have one of these class action lawyers guys, and, and it's ridiculous. But we'll win that lawsuit. And I'm, I'm some, I just want to explain. I and the United States should be this. I don't settle lawsuits, very rare. Because once you settle lawsuits, everybody sues you. Very simple. It's like business. I teach it. When you settle lawsuits, it's easier to settle. Sometimes it's cheaper to settle. But once you settle, I had a friend who taught me a long time ago. He was sued very rarely. And everybody else in the same business was sued all the time. He said, Donald, I never settle. The lawyers learn you don't settle, they don't sue. So I don't settle lawsuits. When I watch these banks, they're settling lawsuits all the time. They get paid $40 million a year, a banker. And then he say, settles lawsuits with governments and other people, giving billions and billions of dollars. I don't do it. So when I, when I saw the different things, uh, and by the way, the winery, you see the wine, because he mentioned Trump Vodka. It's the largest winery on the East Coast. I own it 100%, no mortgage, no debt. You can all check. You have to go check the records, folks. In fact, the press, I'm asking you, please check, because you can see if there's any debt. It was the Kluge estate, John Kluge. He was the richest man in the United States. He died, and he built one of the great vineyards of all time. I mean, there is nothing like it. Close to 2,000 acres. It's in Charlottesville, Virginia, right next to the Thomas Jefferson Memorial. And we're very proud of it. We make the finest wine, as good a wine as you can get anywhere in the world. And I know the press is extremely honest, so I won't offer them any. But if they want, they can take a bottle of wine home. The members... <laughs> The members have plenty, right? The members have plenty. But we have one of the greatest. Actually, I believe it's the largest vineyard and the largest winery on the East Coast. And so I just wanted, so I wanted to put that to rest. So you have the water, you have the steaks, you have the airline that I sold. I mean, what's wrong with selling? Every once in a while you can sell something. You have the wines and all of that. And Trump University, we're going to start it up as soon as I win the lawsuit. Does that make sense? I mean, that's it. Okay. The... Uh, and I want to thank my friend Paul O'Neill, because that to me is a big deal. I, I, I had such respect when Paul was a Yankee. He just didn't make mistakes. Tough, smart, we could use him right now. And he just didn't make mistakes. I love that kind of a guy. I think what this shows, really more than anything else, is that advertising is not as important. It really isn't as important as competence because there has never been more money spent on hitting somebody than was spent on me. And between that and people saying things, and you know, Lindsey Graham goes, and he's a nasty person. First of all, he's wrong on the military. He truly, this is why he's, said, I've been doing this for 15 years. That's right, we've been fighting a war for 15 years with this kind of thinking. I mean, if you're gonna fight a war, win the war, and let's get back to rebuilding our country, okay? But Lindsey Graham, I mean, he's been so nasty. I think he's probably a nice guy, but he's been so nasty. I watch him, I say, man, does he hate Donald Trump? And I watch him, and, and you know, if you think about it, every single person that's attacked me has gone down, okay? I don't want to mention names. Let's not mention names, okay? They, they're out. They're gone. But you can take a look at virtually every single person. We started off with 17. We're down to four. Of the four, they're pretty much all gone. Okay, pretty much. They didn't do so well tonight, folks. Okay, I'm not going to say anybody didn't do well. They didn't do well. There's only one person did well tonight, Donald Trump, I will tell you. So. I mean, it, it was actually amazing. I was impressed. And even Megyn Kelly said, boy, Donald Trump really did well tonight. Thank you, Megyn. Thank you. That was a very unusual. I was shocked, actually, to hear that. But that was very nice. And Charles Krauthammer said that. He was very, very nice. Thank you, Charles. It's about time. I've been waiting like five years, Charles. Um, but, but it is true. I mean, every single... We, I have had such hostility. Like with Lindsay, he was at seven. He attacked me, and we took him down to zero. He leaves in disgrace. 
He then goes to his own state, and they do a poll in South Carolina. He endorses somebody else, and the poll in South Carolina has me at 47, him at two, and he's a sitting senator. And then he went down from there. And, and you know what? I don't like to bring it up, but I tell you, it's enough, Lindsay. You just relax, go home, relax for a little while. Everyone knows you take this big defeat. And the problem is the press never calls them out. They go to this horrible defeat, and then they go and they start immediately on the attack. And it's like he never ran and made a fool out of himself. You know, at what point do you call people out? So I call people out. But it is true. Uh, they've attacked me viciously, and every single one who's attacked me is gone. And I'm very proud of that because, because that's what we should have for our country. That's what we should have. ISIS should not be beating us. We don't win anymore. We don't win with our military. We don't win with health care. We don't win with anything. And we should be in a position where ISIS is dictating terms. And, you know, the other day at one of the debates, the one before last, they asked Ted, uh, Lion Ted. I call him Lion Ted. He holds the Bible high, and then he goes down, he puts the Bible down, and then he lies. <laughs> Lion Ted. You know, he, he'll say, I'm the only one that beat Donald Trump. I said it before. I beat him. I beat him. But he doesn't say, yeah, he won like four, and I won like 12 or 13, right? He forgets the other part. But lie in Ted, and you know, when they say the evangelicals in watching, in fact, I was watching Carl, and he said how great I did with the evangelicals, and everyone was a little surprised. I'm a very good Christian. And, you know, they're chipping away at Christianity. And we're not going to let that happen anymore, folks. I'll tell you. And a lot of times I'll say at the rallies around Christmas time, we're going to start saying Merry Christmas again. You know, they don't say it anymore. The department stores don't put it up. We're going to start saying it again. But they're chipping away at Christianity, and we just can't do it. And I'll tell you, with the evangelicals, they get it. They get it. They get me. They understand me. I'll be the best thing that ever happened to them. I mean that, 100%. And they don't like the way Ted talks, and they don't like the fact that he truly does lie. And I actually was, I mean, lies badly. And I was actually, interestingly, little Marco helped me a lot. Because Marco... What Marco did is in one of the debates, he screamed across me. I was, I've been in the center from the beginning, right? Never out of center. In fact, I always like an odd number because with the odd number, I'm in the center. With an even number, like last week, I hated it because we had four people, so I'm not in the center. So we should always keep it odd numbers, right? So we're right in the center. But I've been in the center for every single debate. But Marco helped me a lot because... He called Ted a liar. He said, you're a liar. That's the first time. Look, I know politicians better than anybody. They're liars, okay? They're serious liars. More importantly, they'll never get you to the promised land, ever. They'll never get you to the promised land. They won't do it because they're controlled by the special interests. They're controlled by the people that put up all this money for them to run. They're controlled. You know how much money was spent in the last week on me? And do you know how many times they were asking, despite the fact that they're not supposed to be talking to their super PAC. Carl, fellas, let me ask you a question. How many times do you think Marco and Ted and all of them were calling their super PAC? Is that right? It's called life. That's the way life works. They talk to their super PAC. They're not supposed to, but that's the way life works. So we are going to do something. I think we're going to clean the slate. I think we're going to do really well in Florida. It's my second home. I love Florida. I love Florida. <laughs> I love Florida, special place, and I think we're going to do really well. I think we're going to do really well in Ohio. Now that I have Paul O'Neill's endorsement, I know I'm going to win Ohio. But I love Ohio. I have so many friends in Ohio. It's an amazing place. And uh, we're going to go have a lot of fun. And then what we're going to do is we're going to beat Hillary Clinton. And we're going to beat her badly. We're going to beat her badly. And I think one of the things, and then we'll take some questions, but one of the things that really I add that's very different, you know, we always talk about the five and sometimes six, but the five states that you have to get, whether it's Ohio or Pennsylvania or Florida, you know, if you don't get one, because the Republicans structurally, it's much tougher. It's much tougher for a Republican to win the presidency, like by a factor of five. But I add things that nobody else can do. I have a chance of New York. Now, can you imagine if you won a, as big as New York, all of those delegates? Upstate New York, I poll higher than anybody ever. Because they are really in trouble up there. 
And they know that I would have done things, they wouldn't be in trouble right now if they would have taken my advice, but they're really in trouble. But I'll get, I'll get Michigan. I mean, I'm gonna get Michigan because we're gonna bring the car industry back. We're gonna take it back. We're gonna bring the car industry back into Michigan. I'm gonna win Michigan. It's never even a question. When these candidates are talking about running, it's never even a question. Michigan's not something they even talk about. I'll win New Jersey, I'll win Ohio, I'll win Florida. I'll win Virginia. I have great properties in Virginia. Charlottesville, we just talked, winery. Uh, on the Potomac River, we have one of the great places in the world. I have 600 acres on the Potomac River, one of the great pieces of property in the world. Very, very successful place. I'm, you know, I have a lot of employees in Virginia. And it seems that when I have something in a location, like when I'm in Virginia and I have a lot of employees, I have great places, uh, Florida where I have Doral. Doral was great last week with uh, Adam Scott. I mean, two days ago, Adam Scott, how good was that? <laughs> Who's a great young man and the way he won the, uh, the tournament, the Cadillac World Championship. But when you have property in a state, it means you love the state. It means you have a lot of employees. You pay these employees. You take care of their, their health care. You take care of their education for their families. You take care of so many things. And you just do well. So I think I'm going to do great there, and I think I'm going to do great in Ohio. And I really look forward to it. I'm going to be working very hard between the two and Illinois. I mean, I have one of the greatest buildings in the world. I mean, in Chicago, I have one of the greatest buildings, rated the number one hotel in North America. And I'm very proud of it. It's a great, great, right on the river. And it's a great, great building. And maybe that's where we have our next news conference. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll do it right in Chicago. So let's, uh, let's see what the press has to ask, and we'll then go home and we'll